Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. I've always wanted to try making stamps with my Cricut and I thought Christmas was a great time to try that. So I'm really excited about today's video showing how I made these super cute and inexpensive stamps with my Cricut machine. If you enjoy this video, give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe if you are new to my channel and let's get into the tutorial. I'm using these wood planks that I found at the Dollar Tree to add my stamps to. It comes in a six pack making it really inexpensive. You can use any wood though for this project. These wood planks were bigger than what I wanted my stamps to be so I decided to cut them in half. To do that I used my Cricut self healing mat to find the center of the wood. The wood is 4.5 inches wide so half of that would be 2.25 inches. I made marks with my pencil on both sides. Then I lined up those marks against one of the lines on my self healing mat. I took my ruler and placed it over that line then used my exacto knife to cut down each side of the wood plank. After that was done, I bent the wood plank to break it in half. I took my X-Acto knife to clean it up a little, then used a sheet of sandpaper over it to give it a smooth edge. I decided to paint these with Apple Barrel Nutmeg Brown Paint. I felt like it wouldn't look as finished without painting it. I love buying the Apple Barrel paint from Walmart. It's such a reasonable price and the paint works really well. Now I'll show you how I put together the stamp designs in Cricut Design Space. I'm going to be using Cricut Design Space images, so I'm going to go over here and search for the ones that I want. I already went through before this and found the ones I wanted to do. With these stamps, the foam, it's a little tricky getting it to, like, to have clean cuts, so I decided to use images that are not too detailed. So I'm going to use this Christmas tree. Then I'm going to find a stocking. And for the stocking, I'm just doing kind of a plain stocking here also. And then I'm going to do a sleigh. A lot of these sleighs, how it's really thin, it's just a little trickier to cut those out on the foam sheets. So this one would be a good one. I have Cricut Access, so I pay for that each month. And all of those that have the green A, you can use with that. So now you can see down at the bottom, I have all three selected and I'll insert these into Cricut Design Space. I want to make these all the same color, otherwise it'll separate it on different mats and the foam sheet, it's gonna be all one color. So I'm just gonna change both of these to the same color as the sleigh. Now I'm going to size these. I'm going to grab a shape and I'm going to make this the same size as our wood pieces. I'm going to go up to unlock. These are 2.25 by 4.5. Now I'm just going to bring these in here. I'm going to send this to the back or another way you can do it is go over to your layers panel and just slide that down. Then I'm just going to make each image smaller so that it fits inside the rectangle. I just highlighted over both of these and I'm going to align and center them just to make sure that it looks okay. This one I probably should make just a tiny bit smaller. Now I'm going to grab the Christmas tree and I will size this also. I'm trying to make it almost as big as the stamp. I think that looks good. Now I'm going to turn this and a little trick on doing that, hit shift on your keyboard, then start turning it so it makes it a lot easier. Now I'm gonna make this smaller and line this up in here. I like how all of those are sized. Now I'm just going to hide this so the Cricut won't cut that out. Another thing I want to mention is this one has two pieces, but it's only one layer, so you don't need to attach it or anything. All three of these are just one layer. 
I'm going to be cutting each design out three times to make it a little bit thicker. You can duplicate each one, but if you go to make it, there's an easier way to do this. All you have to do is go up to your project copies and select three, then select apply, and it'll do that for you. You want to make sure it's not going past 11 inches for the foam, and it's not. My sheet is a 12 by 12 sheet, but if you have smaller foam sheets, it's important to go over here and change the size. Now I'll click on continue. I'm using my Maker Machine, but you can use your Explore Air 2 as well. The only thing with this is it's recommended to use the deep cut blade for foam sheets because it is a little bit thicker. So now I'm going to go over to Browse All Materials. There's a setting for craft foam, which is what we're using, and I did some test cuts and that worked out pretty well. So I'll select that and hit Done. I also want to mention for the pressure, I had tried more pressure because it was kind of ripping it at first, but it actually works better to use less in that case. But a lot of times it actually works better to use less in that case because when it uses more pressure, it can make it rip. So if you're noticing your material ripping, try actually switching it to less pressure. You can also see it says to move the star wheels over all the way to the right. You'll definitely want to do this because it'll leave indents into your foam. And you can see here where it's recommending the deep point blade. Here's the foam sheets I'm using. I bought these at Michael's. You can find these at any craft store. You can find them on Amazon um, or even the Dollar Tree. I tried looking there first but couldn't find any. I'm using my purple strong grip mat for the foam sheets. I like to use my brayer tool to press the foam into the mat which helps it stick better. I set my deep cut blade into the machine, then load my cutting mat into the Cricut for it to cut out. I just went in with my X-Acto knife to clean up the cuts just a little. Now I'm ready to glue my foam sheets onto the wood. I'm using tacky glue that I actually found at the Dollar Tree. I glue one side and set it on the wood. I'm not sure if anyone else is like me, but I tend to get glue happy. Then it drives me crazy when it seeps out after pressing it down. I tried using just a cotton swab just to clean up the glue a little and later after these dried I went back and cleaned it up a little bit again. Then I add the other two foam sheets. You'll want to make sure the glue is on the correct side so that it will line up the same way. Then I follow the same process for the other two designs. I also set a heavy book on top of all of these after it was done just to help with the glue. After finishing the stamps, I thought it would be cute to put black vinyl on the outside so you can see which stamp is which. So what I'm going to do is cut these out on black adhesive vinyl. So I'm going to go back and click on make it. Then I'll go down and hit continue. Then I'll just select vinyl. I switch out my fine point blade and load my mat into the machine to cut out the black vinyl. Then I just weed out the excess vinyl. Here's how the stamps look after they've dried and I cleaned up the glue. I put transfer tape on the vinyl to transfer these to the wood planks. I'm using Expressions Vinyl Transfer Paper. I always have a link for that in my description box because I love it so much. I'm using my scraper to press down the transfer tape on the vinyl. Then I remove the backing of it. I always recommend removing the backing. And then I just place this on top of the wood plank, then remove the transfer tape. 
Then I do the same thing for the next two. When I was doing the stocking one, I realized that I had glued on the foam sheets the opposite way that the Cricut cut it out. So that's why the black vinyl and the foam sheet end up not matching. So you'll want to make sure that the black vinyl lines up the same way as the foam sheet. I'm loving how these stamps turned out, and now I want to show you how I use the ink to add them to paper. So I wanted to show you how I use these on camera. They are so fun. They are a little bigger than I had planned. I thought these would be cute on Christmas card envelopes, but they are a little big, but I still absolutely love them. It was an extremely inexpensive craft to make, and it's fun that you can personalize them however you like. Thank you so much for watching. I would love it if you subscribe to my channel if you are new and hit the bell if you don't want to miss any of my videos and I hope you all have a great day.